History of the Grand Lodge of the Philippines An article published in the Cable Toe, the official organ of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of the Philippines. In 1898, an American military lodge under the Grand Lodge of North Dakota was set up in Manila. It was followed by Manila Military Lodge No. 58 with a warrant from the Prince Hall Grand Lodge, Free and Accepted Masons of Missouri. Then in 1901, Manila Lodge No. 342 under the Grand Lodge of California was chartered. A few years later two more lodges under California jurisdiction were organized. In 1907, the Grand Lodge of Scotland chartered Lodge Perla del Orient. This period too saw the organization of Scottish Rite Bodies, Chapter of Royal Archmasons, a Council of Royal and Select Masters, a Commandery of Knights Templar, a Chapter of the Eastern Star, a Court of the Order of the Amaranth and a Club of the Mystic Shrine. In 1912, the three California lodges founded the Grand Lodge of the Philippine Islands. Alejandrino typified the Masonic preferences of the Filipinos. They were partial to Latin masonry. Like the Americans, they experimented with multiple Masonic jurisdictions. The Filipinos re-established their lodge under the Gran Oriente de España, Gran Oriente Espanol, and Grand Oriente Lusitano Unido. They founded lodges under the Grand Orient of France and the Grand Lodge of France. They even attempted to set up the Philippine Grand Orient. In 1907, the Filipinos who owed allegiance to the Grand Orient Espinal organized the regional Grand Lodge of the Philippines. Through the years, the fortunes of the sundry Masonic organizations would whack and wane, some would falter, others would flourish. Out of that chrysalis, however, a strong and vibrant Philippine masonry evolved. The Scottish Rite bodies grew into a supreme council, the York Rite chapters, councils and commanderies were able to establish their own grand bodies. In 1917, two outstanding masons, Manuel L. Quezon and Governor-General Francis Burton Harrison, engineered the Union of Filipino and American Masons. As a result, all legitimate Masonic lodges in the Philippines were brought under one roof. To this day, that union stands as strong as ever. Today we live in a democratic society and breathe the air of freedom. The Masonic ideals of separation of church and state, freedom of religious worship, public education, and freedom of expression are now part of the law of the land. We have grown so accustomed to them we take them for granted and assume that they have always been there. Once in a while, however, we should take stock and reflect on the sacrifices and hardships the pioneer masons had had to endure that we may enjoy all these democratic freedoms.